Yeah, I think we are live, Chilpa, madam. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. We welcome you to yet another session on uh, reproductive immunology. So this is a very upbeat topic, which is a very, uh, very new molecule, which uh, we will be speaking on today. That is uh, thymosin. Thymosin, also known as immunosin alpha, which was first uh, introduced uh, by Gufik in 2022, which got uh, DCGI approval for the usage in uh, moderate to severe COVID to reduce the number of deaths in COVID. And probably they have extrapolated the research which has been done uh, about the cytokine storm and the effect of uh, this molecule. Uh, so similar thing, I think uh, they have uh, extrapolated into the recurrent pregnancy loss and recurrent implantation failure and how it can be uh, useful in uh, such scenarios. Dr. J has been uh, uh, doing quite a bit of work on this uh, molecule. So he will share his personal experience and also a little bit of uh, theory on this. Yeah, over to you. Sir. Yeah. So uh, guys, two things are important. Just remember one thing. Imosin Alpha is available commercially and has been used in medical ICUs across the world in many, many countries by a lot of people. Okay. And their results for uh, any form of immunocompromised patients are pretty good. Okay. Just remember one thing. Thymosin is like that sweetener. Okay. You know, when you have, when you are drinking, uh, when you are drinking tea, okay, you want to add an artificial sweetener, but you don't want to add sugar. Correct. So you can add an extra sweetener, commercial sweetener from outside. No. So thymosin is something like that for the immunity. I'm not going to go down into the absolute microscopic and molecular details of thymosin, but I'm going to discuss everything from the perspective of gynecology. Okay. So please remember one thing at the moment. Uh, I'm just giving you my data. Okay. This is just my data. I have no uh, right or, you know, I don't know what anybody else is doing about it. Okay. So I will just tell you where exactly you can use thymosin alpha in fertility practice. Okay. So this is just something which you have to keep in mind. Okay. And of course, I reserve the right to be wrong. I can change my data after the next six to eight months. So currently I have used approximately 580 vials of this molecule. Okay. Of thymosin. So just remember one thing, what is important as far as the reproductive immunology is concerned? And we know this, so I'll just draw it and explain. Here is your blastocyst embryo. This is your inner cell mass. We all already know all these things, correct? And it is going to have syncytiotrophoblast, which is surrounding this. Syncytiotrophoblast would then invade in the uterus also, okay? And on the opposite end, you have the barrier with spiral arterioles the spiral arterioles will go inside the uterine vasculature okay and in between of all these guys you have nk cells right you have t cells you have b cells you have macrophages you have every other thing okay now for a normal implantation to occur, NK cell activity has to be moderated and they have to be present around 60 to 80 percent inside the endometrium and NK cell has to upregulate immune modulation. Okay, just remember that it is important that NK cell does this for you. Now in certain instances, especially when you have idiopathic factors, especially when you have idiopathic causes of recurrent pregnancy loss or recurrent implantation failure, it is thought that it could be due to whatever. It could be due to endometritis. It could be due to endometriosis. Okay, endometritis. It could be due to TB. It could be due to endometriosis. It could be due to whatever you can think of. Okay, in all those situations, these T cells, no, these guys end up losing their balance. Okay, now thymosin is basically coming from the thymus gland. Okay, something similar to that. Just remember that. Okay, it is released from the thymosin gland. It is a peptide. You can alter this peptide into many small tweaks you can do to this peptide. Okay, here you are specifically trying to ensure that thymosin goes to these T cells and it goes and tells these T cells, calm down. Okay, that's all that you are supposed to remember. This is what it does. This is what we think it does. All right. When the T cells calm down, automatically signal goes to NK cells that, okay, T cells are down. 
you go and do your routine immune modulation which is required all right this is the basic funda do not go into the molecular biology of all these things we can discuss i can speak on one hour for that but for a routine gynecological practice all you need to remember is that it causes t cells to calm down forget t1 t2 whatever it is just forget all these things just remember it causes it to calm down which allows nk cells to function normally this is what we think it does all right now i have used thymosin so far you will be shocked i have used it predominantly in endometriosis okay second i have used it in failed ivf failed ivf with pgta okay so i would always do a pgta when there is failed ivf normal embryos were there normal endometrium was there at the moment i have not used it at the moment okay i have not used it in recurrent pregnancy losses at the moment i have not used it at the moment i have not used it in any other conditions where they say it is going to be effective at the moment i have not done okay i have only used it in cases of endometriosis and in cases of failed ivf with pgta both the results so far are very very good there is a dose in which thymosin has to be administered remember it has a half life of approximately 26 hours or so so normally the dosage schedule which somebody would come and tell you as far as thymosin is concerned is going to be that you need to use an alternate day dosage schedule for thymosin all right that you need to give it every alternate day and it is going to be good i i personally have not used it in that manner for recurrent implantation loss i am using it on wednesdays and sundays so these are my two shots which i give so it's basically going to be 3.2 grams of thymosin alpha every wednesday 3.2 grams on every sunday is what i want to give to the patient at this point in time and this is predominantly for endometriosis okay and this is also predominantly for previously failed ivf all right now this is to be administered only and only and only when patient does not have endometritis please remember this okay if the endometritis is absent only then you can give thymosin to that patient if all other factors are absent that means basically it is to be used only in cases of idiopathic recurrent pregnancy loss and recurrent implantation failure so you are going to ask me this question then why on earth did you use it in endometriosis see what typically happens is people don't understand this that endometriosis actually has a lot of immune modulatory action okay that is the reason why all these when people say that even if you have grade 4 endometriosis okay when you have grade 4 endometriosis plus rectal nodule and everything is plastered i am the world's best fertility consultant i will only do ivf and i will not do there is no role of surgery okay that is the reason when you only do ivf and you do not do surgery because you don't call anyone to do that surgery or you don't know how to do that surgery these type of patients end up with a failure okay same thing can happen if you do the surgery as well so the thing is once the surgery is done and fertility is conserved okay once the surgery is done and fertility is conserved and especially tubes are normal this is very important then we allow these young girls post endometriosis surgery we put these young girls on thymosin alpha okay and we ensure and we allow them to try naturally for approximately 3 to 4 months okay and that's a very very good thing to do we have been trying this it has given us good results so far kindly do not extrapolate it to your practice till we come up with more conclusive data on this just wait maybe in the next 2 to 3 months by april we plan to publish this data and once we publish this data that is when one must actually start using uh, any form of uh, any form of uh, you know uh, thymosin in their practice at the moment don't jump to it okay i can come out maybe after 4 and 4 months or so and i can tell you that okay we tried but it is not going to work so nicely at the moment we are taking specific experimental consents from all the patients in whom we are trying this thing okay it is not a proven therapy at the moment please remember i repeat it is not a proven therapy not is the most important word in this okay it is like ivig and intralipids ivig is not proven intralipid is not proven steroids are not proven lit is not proven correct but rather than doing any of that random shit i think this is something which is a good molecule is what i think at this moment i could be wrong okay 
I think it is a good molecule. It may help in these well-selected cases, the ones which I mentioned. I have not tried it for recurrent pregnancy loss because recurrent pregnancy loss, I normally, as I told you, 75 to 80 percent of the time, you will come to a conclusion only. Forget doing giving thymosin and all these things, you will come to a conclusion. So that is where I finish. I will answer maybe two or three questions. Just remember this basics about the mechanism of action. It is a huge mechanism of action. Just remember this much. Don't remember anything else beyond this. So, uh, how many doses you give? You said Wednesday, Sunday. So, for how many weeks you give? Ah, sorry. 12 weeks. 12 weeks is uh, okay. And what would be the cost coming up to for 12 weeks? 10,000 rupees per week. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That will be like wow. 1.2 lakhs. Yeah, it's expensive, as I told you. It is expensive and we don't know how much it works, okay, at the moment. I know. Oh. oh sorry. Uh, oh, I was shocked. Okay. Um, uh, so, in cases of like uh, you said, you will allow them to try naturally. So, you haven't used it in cases where uh, uh, you had to do an IVF and uh, is there any specific uh, protocol you follow in that situation? Not yet, madam. I am I'm, I'm not giving it to patients prior to embryo transfer at the moment. Not giving it. Till I am convinced, I will not give it because it is a big cost to the patient. Yeah, but see, I think uh, the actual, the company, uh, the Gufek, how they uh, they give the protocol, it is mainly, they say it works in cases of uh, recurrent implantation failure. That is an incomplete protocol. So I have already spoken to the team in Gufek and uh, we have already spoken to the guys from Gufek and that protocol is completely incomplete. Okay, so every alternate day, if you give the shot and don't give a shot 48 hours prior to embryo transfer, that is a completely, completely incomplete protocol. Okay. So I have already told them that I am not going to give them, give the patient in such a dose. So what is your uh, scientific uh, uh, logic to do it for 12 weeks? I mean, is it, is there anything like, do you believe that immunomodulation will take 12 weeks? Like how we do it for the, the, the normal cycle, no, of all these blood, uh, the way in which the blood products get formed in the body. Okay, the biggest cycle is actually for RBCs, okay, uh, which comes to approximately 100 days or so. Mm -hmm. After that, the cycle keeps on reducing. So T cells, B cells, NK cells, their cycles are much, much, much lesser. And the least it is, it is for platelets, approximately 8 days. Okay, so based on all these things, no, I just thought that uh, 12 weeks should be uh, a trial period to start off with. Okay, so you are telling this uh, in uh, the thymosin acts on the T cells to calm it down. Uh, is there any other molecule which will uh, work on the T cell? Uh, like if we give steroid, if we give, uh, uh, say, like intralipid, I mean, you think their mechanism of action uh, is through T cells? Nobody knows it, madam, at the moment. See, all we know is that, you know, somebody needs to be like a stabilizer mm. inside all these things. Okay. And the guy who is the stabilizer at the moment, see, thymosin is a broad spectrum immune modulator. Yeah, yeah. Please understand that. Agreed. Like thymus is a broad spectrum guy. Thymus is like uh, thymus is like a pan gynecologist. It will go and conquer every field. Understanding. Yeah. The other things is somebody is a fertility specialist, somebody is an endoscopic surgeon, somebody is an obstetrician, somebody is a fetal medicine specialist. This guy is everything. Yeah. Okay. So it it uh, it sorts of. Uh, gives you that good uh, area because you know you don't really want something which is only acting on the endometrium and not on the peritoneum you don't really know peritoneal toxins how they would act which is why i started off with endometriosis because we have a massive volume of endometriosis yeah, as yeah. you are aware and okay. i thought we will start off with endometriosis because of that okay so uh you are saying uh because this is like a generalized immunomodulator you think it may be relevant in cases of endometriosis which is also a systemic disease to a certain extent so do you do any particular tests before you start off uh, doing this i mean is no. there anything in particular no. that you look for in the patient is it like no. uh, in endometriosis is it the ca125 levels is it like only the peritoneal uh, spots the age. Anybody in whom you are doing fertility conserving surgery for grade 4 endometriosis. That is grade 4 endometriosis. It's not... only grade 4 endometriosis. You can't do all this for, uh, you know, somebody will find one powder spot somewhere and say, oh, I treated endometriosis. All that is, all that and, all that and this has got no role. This is for grade 4 endometriosis, nodular endometriosis. Just remember that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah, it was quite uh, interesting and simplified than what the jargon uh, they uh, they came and told me. Uh, uh, so it's good. If, if anybody comes to you and tells you the jargon, that is because nobody knows anything about it at the moment. You know how it was discovered, how people started using it. People started using it by fluke. Yeah. Okay. And then they realized that this is working. Mm, mm, mm. Right. It is like how we started the WhatsApp group. Then we realized, oh, it is working so nicely. Right. The same thing. Same thing happened with thymosin. Okay. And just because, uh, you know, somebody's fluke, fluke worked in some disease. Correct. Because in COVID, it was broad spectrum where they needed immunity to go up at that moment. Because thymosin goes and sensitizes the other drugs also to improve the immunity. It will improve the immunity. It will improve the sensitization of HIV molecules. See, how does it improve the sensitivity of HIV molecules? HIV goes and acts on those T cells only, no? Yeah. Where that retrovirus is going to go and get stuck. So mm. that is their logic, honestly speaking. Otherwise, there is a beautiful 24-page chapter on this in uh, uh, by one Chinese guy. I'll send you the link on our WhatsApp groups. No, no, so not, not, needed. That. No, no not needed. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So it was good. I think uh, uh, this kind of like, you know, gives an insight to what other molecules are present at this moment for our consultants to try out instead of uh, uh, giving it. At the moment, just hold. I mean, unless you also want to do something, no problem. But at the moment, I think just hold because we don't know. All right. And when we don't really know, and if it is an experimental tag only, then I won't want a patient to go through like a 2 lakh rupee or a 1.5 lakh rupee therapy uh, where everybody is doubtful of the outcome, honestly. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for your time. I thank everyone. Almost 150 people have joined for a thymus in class, which is surprising. Um, thank you so much. Goodbye.